Hello, Nate. Hello, Chris. How how are you doing? I'm a doing. You're a doing. All right, cool, cool. Well, hey, welcome to a very like as opposed to the last like month of podcasts or two months of podcasts, a very news heavy podcast. Uh, very. But yeah, welcome to another episode of Space Time Talko. I am one of your hosts, Chris, aka Time Lobrito. And I am the other host, Nate, aka something something about. Pot and tea. <gasps> a tiny pot of tea? Mm-hmm. You can okay, we need to make sure you get the alternate title, a tiny pot of tea. <laughs> a tiny, um, pot. tiny pot of tea. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it'll say the real thing, don't worry. Animation and magic. Um <laughs> the fuck's going on? Animals. Animals, I say. Literally. Uh mm-hmm. but yeah, hey, what's up guys? It's uh the fifth. So hey, we're still within technically the first week of Pride. Happy Pride Month. Yes, we are. <clears throat> raise your raise your hand if you're not a straight. Haha, <laughs> dirty straight. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get the tiny little hand raise inside the camera. Like... Yeah, okay. <laughs> um Yeah, Nate, what you what you what you we're gonna change things up since we've been doing news first since it's such tinies. Um We've been watching slash reading. Well, <clears throat> we'll start with the stuff that we're not going to talk probably much about. Um, then we'll get into the stuff that we're going to probably talk a lot about. <laughs> as far as reading this week, the only sort of new thing on my table was uh, picking up Banner of War Part 3. Um, for those of you who don't know or are not involved in comics, there is there was a very good run of the Hulk done previously. Um, where Banner sort of builds this mine palace inside of Hulk and turns Hulk into a kind of starship that he can pilot. Um, He traps the Hulk psyche in an engine room where he makes him fight these ever-increasing threats to sort of power him up as he goes. Um, But Banner is very much in control of the outside Hulk, the actual physical body of Hulk. Um, There's also a third personality inside that's unbeknownst to us during this comic run for a little while. (gasps) <gasps> up until we get to, I believe, issue five or six, um, that actually takes the image of Betty inside of Banner's mind and whispers things to him and provokes him constantly. We find out that that's Hulk's Hulk Titan. Um, so, very cool run. Fucking Highly comics, man. <laughs> well, now we're on to Banner of War. And. This is very much a Hulk versus Thor kind of thing. They fought in comic books in the past. It's always been pretty epic when they fought. Um, this was done to celebrate, I believe, the 100th anniversary of both. Not 150th anniversary of both. Yeah. 100th um, together. <laughs> yeah, 50th anniversary of both comic book characters. Um, the last issue we got was actually pretty interesting because it's actually Thor number 25, I think it is. So, yeah. Like Thor 25, um, in Thor's last run, Thor basically has a reconstructed version of Mjolnir after it's shattered, and Odin's spirit is possessing Mjolnir. So Odin himself has a spirit can also control some of the actions that Mjolnir takes. Um, so in that issue, while they're fighting, he asks Thor to let him go to release him, and he crashes basically right in the Hulk's face, and that transports... Odin's spirit into Banner's mind (laughs) um, where they're fighting each other. Um, So we had to deal with that whole thing and it's it's very interesting actually. Um, One of the biggest mysteries though is what Banner did in El Paso. This is sort of the crux of both runs right now. This was like the big question between both runs. It was very much assumed that a bunch of people died in El Paso and you're led to believe without them explicitly telling you that Hulk basically killed a bunch of people in El Paso. Um, And it turns out that wasn't the case at all. So this is a spoiler alert for anyone who's looking forward to reading Banner of War, but Bruce's rage now has the ability to infect others. (laughs) And so what happens is he's sitting in this bar in El Paso, really just trying to take a break, honestly. Some guy touches... He touches some guy's arm... And everybody in the bar is infected with, like, this almost Hulk disease. They all Hulk out. They're all uncontrollably raging. 
and something takes over Banner. Now, mind you, he's not hawked out at this point. He's completely normal human Banner, but rips these guys limb from limb. Literally, you see this on the page. He's tearing them to pieces, smashing their skulls, very bloody, and kills all these people in El Paso. Bar burns down, everything like that. So, the his motivation for doing this is finding out how to control that and why it's happening in the first place. Um, the biggest spoiler in the last sort of page of this Banner of War Part 3 um, is Hulk basically explodes like a gamma bomb <laughs> because he's got way too much gamma in him at the time, and that ends up infecting Thor. So we get to see Thor hawked out on the very last page, which is Thulk. really cool. <laughs> it's just yes. Thulk. So they write uh, Thor smash on the page, actually. <laughs> um so, yes, we get to see this sort of new side of Hulk, a new side of Thor, and we get to see some new strange things going on with the with Hulk's ability and persona. Um, so it's a very much more... The, the story itself is very much more driven by Banner's trauma as a child that led him to becoming the Hulk in the first place. Um, so it's less of, okay, we've got a big green guy and let's go, go and beat up let's have him go beat up a bunch of people, which it very much is, but it's also an exploration of Banner and Hulk's connection to one another and how that affects the people around him. So, that's all I've got right now. <clears throat> yeah. I, uh... And I got... I gotta just start reading my comics. I'm so far behind on everything. Um, <laughs> it's one of those things, like, I, I have all that. I have everything that you were just talking about. I haven't read any of it, but I'm okay mm. with knowing it, because it's also, for me... The main reason I picked up all the entire run of Hulk right now is because of the artist. It has nothing to do with the story. I just mm -hmm. hope that I'm also going to enjoy the story. Um, <laughs> it's kind of why I ended up getting stuck, sucked into uh, the last run of um, Amazing Spider-Man. I uh, mm -hmm. can't remember his name right now. Ryan Otley. That's it. Boom. Guy, He's the uh, main artist for currently Hulk, previously one of the main artists of Amazing Spider-Man, but most well-known for uh, Invincible. Mm. Um, which, goddamn, people are ready for that to come back, too. Uh, I'm sure they are. Oh, yeah, the, well, <laughs> what? I won't spoil anything for anybody, but the second arc of Invincible kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they're going to change things. Um, I hope so. I mean, because they, they already changed some things with, like, Seth Rogen's character. Uh, Al? I mean, Isn't it Al the Alien? Al, yes. Al and the Alien. Al and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. We could see a Which whole person? lot of things. I'm, oh, I want to say things, but I can't because of the fact that this is new content for other people. Even though the comic I mean, has been done for years. I'm not going to spoil anything. We don't have any spoiler warning for that setup, so I'm not going to. Um, I can't get into specifics, but they do weird things with Omni-Man that I don't like. <laughs> they do weird things with everybody. There's a whole story arc that people are worried that they're going to. And this is years, years down the road if they ever get to like end game stuff. Um, but yeah, god damn. Uh, so, okay, still on my, I didn't put it in here, still on my Isekai bullshit, <laughs> but I hit a point where I'm like, oh, I'm getting through all this shit, so I ended up finding something that's 190 chapters, uh, it is a, I want to say newer, but it's 190 chapters, um, <laughs> series, uh, it's also, I believe, on Webtoon, the, through, like, the, the normal ways where people actually pay for their manga, mm -hmm. um, there's a series called A Returner's Magic Should Be Special. And the whole point of it is, in this world, uh, there's magic. Woohoo, magic. Um, but with that magic, there are also these invasive situations called, I think, Shadow Realms. I've already forgotten because I'm horrible at remembering manga. Um, basically, they are at the end game. They defeat the final boss. They're like, good, we saved the world. Things will be better. Uh, and then something happens that they they didn't know about or they weren't sure that was going to happen. And um, they all die except for the main character who gets sent back to the past. And now with all of his memories and skills to the most for the most part, I think he 
he remembers his skills. I'm not sure if it's that he has the same power level. Um, but he uh, has to figure out a way to fix everything before it gets to the end of the world again. Um, mm-hmm. And it's actually... It's really good. Um, it's It pulls on your heart, heartstrings a little bit. Because um, there are certain things, like certain characters that he has grown in like as friendships and these these relationships with the future versions of them um that he knows he has to prevent their death and knows what's coming for them for the most part uh i think it's technically in season four it's either four or five in the way that they've just they've broken down the chat the uh the storylines um but they just started into the next chapter or the next uh storyline story arc and i'm like oh no there's only like four chapters in this season (laughs) now i have to wait for it to come out weekly like it literally like the 190 just came out last week so i'm like fuck i feel like it's not as bad as one piece i didn't read a thousand fucking chapters and now i'm like oh no i gotta wait a month at a time or a week or two at a time Mm -hmm. um but I'm, i'm i like it i definitely it was definitely one of the ones that i hadn't bookmarked it the entire time i read it because i just kept reading it um, and I hate, I finally hit the end and I'm like, Oh, gotta make sure I don't lose that. Saved it. Thankfully, like throughout the last couple of chapters, it's like, Hey, here's two other series that you might like if you like this one. Um, I will say it's <sighs> manga is not always diverse. And we know that. We've talked about that so much. It's just a bunch of white people. Sorry, white people. Um, yeah. <laughs> I just I say white people just because it's it's set in a more um, European setting, feeling kind of thing. Because um, I know there's some, like, sing, uh, uh, the guy that only stays level one his, the entire series and then uh, solo leveling. That's all. That's Korea, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is very has much more of a like oh there's kingdoms and knights and all that shit and it plays into the class system which is basically their way of being like hey racism (laughs) (laughs) we all everybody's exactly the same race oh you know what no there's barbarian race that are the not white looking Mm -hmm. people i forgot about that Um, of course (laughs) yeah you know um (laughs) god damn but it, I mean, it, pl- it plays into the whole like, oh, commoners can't be powerful. We don't. We look down on commoners. Uh, and mm-hmm. It turns out a big part of that is because the commoners at one point started a revolution and murdered a shit ton of nobles. And I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. <laughs> oh my god, this is completely tangent because you know I'm hard. Like, theory. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there is a uh, there was a tweet that somebody was like, oh, do you remember back at the beginning of um covid where the american government basically was like if you're old and you die cool that helps the economy and i'm like (laughs) they're they're saying like this was a bad thing and i'm like you know i also said that but i also meant it as the senate Uh (laughs) (laughs) i am the senate (laughs) (laughs) um but no that's good i i can't i think i started two other ones just you know random shit they're more webtoony kind of things instead of normal uh manga um, I'm not going to touch on One Piece too much because we're at a really, really interesting point and I'm just like, hmm. you guys are oh. not ready for this stuff to be animated. Um, I'll get there one day. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, if you take some time off, or, do you, okay, if you do, if you dedicate yourself to One Piece, do you think you'll watch it or read it? I'll probably watch it. Mm, okay. The... So here's the thing. I did used to read some One Piece because I used to get Shonen Jump in the mail. Oh, um, you can always get the app. Yes. Well, this is back when they were still shipping out physical copies of Shonen Jump. Um, this is back when I was little eleven year old kid who first got into manga. <laughs> Which, just as a reminder, yeah. we are now in our thirties, and, yes. and this shit is still going. Yep. So I got uh, I got a bunch of anime magazines actually in the mail there's a box sitting well not anymore but did you get uh, maybe there was. Oh. i had a bunch of new type magazines. new type that's it and the reason i got new type is they always came with dvds the DVDs. i love that shit so this got me into a lot of 
actually obscure anime that wasn't shown off that much. Um, but with things like Shonen Jump and Viz, uh, they would send out monthly magazines, yeah. and they would usually have previews or just continuing runs of manga inside the uh, inside the magazine itself. So, I mean, Shonen Jump, when I say magazine, I use the term loosely because it's literally just chapter after chapter of different manga. Yeah. <laughs> I um, always, I'm always entertained by, um, I was always entertained by New Type because New Type literally would just be like, all right, here's a DVD, and also mm -hmm. here's a centerfold of an anime character. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, um, no, that's how I found out about One Piece was reading Shonen Jump, and I did enjoy the first couple chapters of One Piece that I read when, you know, Luffy first gets gum gum fruit and all that stuff like that, um, you know, it was interesting to me as a kid. I don't know how interesting it is to me as an adult, but everyone keeps talking about One Piece being a good thing, and I think the only thing that puts certain people off is it's the the length, uh, the length, and the I hate popular stuff syndrome and stuff like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, as um, somebody that lived through us watching and always talking about Game of Thrones, and you never watching Game of Thrones, I'm proud mm -hmm. of you for never giving in and watching Game of Thrones because it would have been a waste <laughs> of time. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, that's what I've heard, and I'm sorry. The thing is, is when I would sit down at like other people's houses and they'd be watching Game of Thrones, I wouldn't tell them like turn it off or anything like that. I'd watch it with them, but whatever I watched of Game of Thrones, I never enjoyed. Yeah, <laughs> because it tries to pull off like this weird sort of middle fantasy thing where there's these very real human beings that exist everywhere, but there's also dragons and stuff like that. Yeah, it's like and, hey, this world has dragons and zombies, yeah. and everything else is relatively to... normal. I would rather be in a setting like Lord of the Rings where they just go all in with it. Yeah. Like, this is high fantasy. Or a setting like... Skyrim. Uh, Skyrim. Or even a setting that's just no fantasy at all. This is just a medieval setting. Yeah. Like, I'd rather have that than have something that tries to walk a line somewhere between the two. <laughs> you know, uh, while we're talking about some, like, medieval fantasy kind of stuff, I'm going to put a pin in that. Because we're definitely coming back to that by the end of this podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, future, future spoilers. Woo um, so you have not watched anything of Stranger Things for part one, correct? No, I have not. All right, so I'm not going to go into super spoilers. Um, what I will talk about is that I personally am really, really, really enjoying this season. Um, mm -hmm. This is... So me personally, like season one, great. Season two, super forgettable. I don't remember anything that happened in season two. Uh, I think Max was introduced. Yeah, Max was introduced, and they they wore Ghostbusters outfits. Um, mm -hmm. Season three, the monster design I absolutely loved. The storyline was okay and good, um, mm -hmm. but because of the character, the the monster design and the way they handled that, I loved it. Um, this season. Aside from one single plot line, I fucking love this season. I think this is fantastic, mm. and I cannot wait for the next half of the series. Uh, unfortunately, it's it's for, part one is seven episodes, part two is nine episodes. I'm mad that they didn't even split, <laughs> but but episode seven is a really good cutoff point for where we are. Um, these episodes are long. The last episode was almost two hours long. From what I heard, the final episode of the season is two and a half hours long. Jeez. It's just a straight up fucking movie, and I am all for it. Yeah, um, it's it's per it, not perfect. It's it's fantastic. I will not call it perfect because you know. Well, I mean, if this caps off the series, then I hope they do something with that two and a half hours. Because yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, this series, this is we have a Harry Potter effect going on with this series where we've got you know children actors there, starting yeah. out. <laughs> Sorry. That's fine. We've got you know child actors starting out, um, and now they're just getting older. Um, yeah, everyone there at this point, every single one of the the freshmen are in their between eighteen and in and twenties, eighteen and twenties, yeah. I think. Um, there are certain characters that you look at, certain actors that you look at that are playing upperclassmen, and you're like, you are in your thirties. You gotta be in your thirties. Um, Oh, that's right. So Millie Bobby Brown also did a Hot Ones three days ago. <laughs> yeah, how what? So I didn't watch that. I'm I'm not a fan of Hot Ones mostly to be honest, it's because of the host. I'm not a fan of his. Um, he's I didn't a, really. He's watch a very all punchable of... face, in my opinion. 
I didn't really watch all of it, but I enjoy seeing celebrities in pain, so. <laughs> did you hear about the Elizabeth Olsen one? I did not. She mm. went the entire way, I think. Barely had any issue with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and people are like, respect. <laughs> oh, Millie Bobby Brown is also dealing with her own kind of shit because she just recently turned 18, and so... Woman actress turns 18 is all I really need to say about that. <laughs> yeah. Oddly enough, speaking of um, the Olsen, uh, her sisters, they're, that was back early enough in the days of the internet that it was known that um, there was literally like a website being like, how long until the Olsen twins are 18, which is super fucked up. Yep. I mean, they still have tracker. You can find websites that have those trackers where it's just a clock of how yeah. long till this actor or actress turns 18. I mean, hell, yeah. we have sites that are like, is so-and-so still alive? Uh, yeah. And it just says yes or no. Man, some of those sites, I got so sad when they finally switched over to the yes when they, yes. they died or whatever. I'm like, Oof. I think one of the creepiest things with Millie Bobby Brown was her sort of alleged friendship with Drake. Not really alleged, because she just came out and said it. Mm. But And we know what Drake's kind of history with women has been, so... We don't like Drake. Yeah. We don't like Drake. And what's the other one? What's the punchy one? The punchy one? Chris Brown. Fuck Chris both Brown. of them. Yeah. I mean, for all the people out there who may be Drake fans, can you just finally admit to yourself he's not a great rapper? Like, at all. <laughs> I don't even know if he played a good guy in a wheelchair. <laughs> uh... I would have to ask him about that, because they watched that. I didn't watch. I, I'm not a uh, Degrassi fan. I watched the weird, the weird um, Canadian shows, like Blake Holsey High, Strange Days at Blake Holsey High, and that one about sp spies? I don't remember. My childhood. <laughs> My childhood has too much TV to remember everything I watched. Hmm. Hmm. Well... Moving on from the uncomfortable things. <laughs> Moving on from that, too, where we are going to get a little spoilery. Come back later. We'll get around to it. We love you. We're not going to go super heavy, but, you know. Oh, you know what? I, I just faded it to that, but I just realized I think there's a star wipe, and, like, a star wipe would be the best <laughs> thing for... Star wipe for Star Wars. Oh, it's called a Luma wipe, maybe. Hold on, let's see. Yep, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> We're in Kenobi ter territory now. Spoiler territory. Uh, so yeah, we... It's so weird. It's only been two weeks and we're already halfway through the season. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's what happens when they drop two episodes in one day. Uh, not even. It's let, It was like within a week because Friday was two episodes and then that Wednesday was the next episode. Um, yeah. But yeah, we're halfway through Kenobi, which makes sense since in the third episode, spoilers, guess what? Oh, that's right. Our guy, I, I was going to circle it with my mouse, but you can't see that and neither can the stream. Um, <laughs> we already got our first interaction between Obi-Wan and Anakin, aka yeah. Darth Vader. So, well, I'll just say some things I already like about this series. Um Okay, can we agree? Before we go too far, can we agree the best part of that of this entire series so far is little Leia? Well, yes. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> I don't know where they pulled this child from. <laughs> She's not a human being. I'm pretty certain of that. <laughs> um, I have never seen a child actress or actor for that matter do as well as this little girl is doing She's like fantastic it's like the perfect like because i i've recently talked about how perfect um the actress for miss marvel is i believe it's iman mm -hmm. uh, yeah iman valani um and i'm like oh she's perfect for this role i didn't mm -hmm. know i wanted this role to be filled and I'm like, this is the most perfect casting Star Wars has ever, or Disney. I'm just going to say Disney yeah. has ever done in general. Well, it's one of those weird things where, like, with Aman Alani, you have, she's, you know, an adolescent. So it's like she can be teachable and trainable mm -hmm. as an actress. This girl's a like child a, is a lot. <laughs> Ten years old, well, maybe? Yeah, a child is, like, a lot harder to do that with. Um, and... I don't. I just. I really don't know how they pulled it off. 
um, either this kid is a genius beyond her years, or they just have really, really good trainers for her. <laughs> um, and it is, it's amazing to see. I've never seen any child, child on screen ever pull off a character as well as she does. Mm -hmm. She still encapsulates what it means to be a child in the series. Um, she's, you know, full of wonder and curiosity and excitement, but she also is vulnerable and scared and doesn't know a lot about the world around her. No and fucking way. She played, I didn't watch this, but she played girl in Bird Box. Oh, okay. You, I did watch Bird yeah, Box. I didn't recognize her face. That's funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, because they have the mask over their face. It was in 90% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but she she's great. She's amazing in every single way. That being said, Ewan McGregor is still an amazing actor in his own right. Um, and I appreciate that not only are they bringing Obi-Wan back in sort of this middle period between the prequel and sequel trilogy, because we all know Obi-Wan's ultimate fate, mm -hmm. but they're filling in these gaps for us in, you know, current Star Wars canon. And it's important to fill those gaps in because the mainline Star Wars films have always been hero stories. Yeah. It's all about you know, portraying a single Jedi as this valiant savior of the galaxy, but not really dealing with the messy parts in between of what war does to people. Yeah. And, yeah, and that's, I was going to say, we see that obviously this is a, the first um, live action in between almost, besides we're ignoring Rogue One because that is a very focused story. Um, mm -hmm. But we've seen a little bit of that, of that with a combination of Clone Wars and Rebels. Um, yeah. But that mm -hmm. scene in the, I believe it's the second episode, um, which is also, uh, oh, I'm blanking on names. Hold on. I don't want to not know names. Give me a second. Uh, 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 <laughs> no, why can't this be easier to find? <coughs> Hold on. Boba Fett actor. It's Tamara... Morrison, mm -hmm. um, he has uh, played um, the clones or the Jango Fett um, since the prequel series. Uh, this was the first time he actually got to wear the clone trooper suit. Uh, I think he, yeah. he had a whole interview where he talked about this was the first time he wore it uh, as a basically a homeless man. Um, they yeah. portray it as, hey, this he doesn't have anything they the empire ejected all of them from their troops and replaced yeah. them with people that decided to join up well um, that's sort of the important part is it it's a homeless veteran in the mm -hmm. star wars universe right and the clones up until episode three were you know at least in the eyes of the republic right they were valiant noble soldiers charged with protecting the republic yeah. um and then we see this sort of transition period in you know that relates to real life is after a war what do you do with the soldiers who fought it and the answer for star wars is you discard them and you replace them with new soldiers yeah um so we're we're learning even through things like we've seen rebels we've seen clone wars and we've seen you know iterations of clone troopers sort of going out and doing their own thing in the galaxy but we've never seen one who you know, is still trying in his own way to be loyal to the war that he fought, but he's got no he's got no place in the world anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, you know, it's an interesting thing to see, and it's a it's a callback to Obi Wan during the Clone Wars era and his friendship with clones around him, um, and having to sort of deal with that in his own head that these people were more or less my best friends and allies during this war yeah. and then they all betrayed me um <clears throat> so but he has no, no fault of too. their own as no. as horrible as, that, that, as it sounds and sucks to say that it's not their fault they had no choice in the matter well no they had no choice in the matter but it won't be until much later that obi-wan is able to even realize that yeah so i wonder him, if he even knows that uh, well, that's the i don't believe he knows and the reason i say that is at least in the first part of this series that we've seen, what we're dealing with is for Obi-Wan is his PTSD yeah. basically. Yeah. Um, 
we're, we're dealing with this trauma that he's built up, his disconnection to the Force because of it, and his inability to live up to what he was taught his entire life. He no longer feels that he can be a Jedi anymore. Um, and it takes a lot of things to even get him to reach out to the Force again. It takes Leia almost dying to get him to do that. Um, <clears throat> it takes you know, him using the first time we even see him use his lightsaber, it's purely it, out of panic, basically. He yeah, doesn't, he know, doesn't what know what to do, do anymore. <laughs> like, you see him, even him holding it, he looks un uncomfortable holding yes. it again. And that scene in and of itself is interesting, because if you dig deep into Star Wars lore and extended universe stuff, is Obi-Wan is a master of... I believe it's form two of lightsaber combat called Sorosu, but he also mastered, or at least came close to mastering, all other seven forms of lightsaber combat. No oh, shit, I and have he, no idea about that. Well, he's the one in the lore who wrote the book on lightsaber combat for future gen generations. So Sorosu is Jedi defensive form. <laughs> yes. Sorry, well, it's a defensive I... form. He's, he's a master of defending, wearing an opponent out, and looking for an opening. This is sort of one of the reasons he was able to beat Grievous, who had slain tons of Jedi before. He was literally um, coming at him with four lightsabers at one time. Yes. So he's a master of this defensive form of combat. Anakin, or Vader at this point, on the other hand, is a master of form six, I believe, or form five, called Gem So, which is a very offensive form of lightsaber combat. It's basically just trying to beat your opponent to death with a lightsaber. I'm starting to realize um, that I feel like the different breath te techni techniques from Demon Slayer are just Jedi uh, lightsaber forms. They basically are. <laughs> Um, but yeah, his, his lightsaber form is very heavy handed. It's about, you know, battering your opponent, attacking them with very heavy hits and parries to throw them off balance, things like that. And so we see that come through in this fight where Anakin at this point, what people don't know about Vader is Vader's not as fast as, you know, Anakin was or anything like that, but he is intensely more powerful. Yeah. Um, that's and, something we got to see firsthand with the, um, end scene of Rogue One. And then even yeah. with this, with just him, again, like you said, beating down on a out-of-training, or out-of-practice Kenobi. Yes, and so what I noticed halfway through the fight is Vader's using one hand the entire time. <laughs> I loved that. And it, I wonder, because he lost his hand before Kenobi then cut the rest of his limbs off, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, is it the hand that he had his remaining limb basically was that the oh. one limb that he used the most i can't remember i i don't know kim wants to go through and rewatch the entirety of canon star wars <laughs> so i'll let you know later i do know it's his right hand i know that much but yeah. he um he is completely destroying obi in this fight yeah. it's and literally just that. him like it, it feels like he's just got one hand in the pocket being like what's up Oh, yeah. Well, I enjoy it as a thematic element as well because it cements, it helps further cement Darth Vader sort of that horror movie villain. Um, he's a scary, scary guy. Um, yeah. And we get to see that come through. That being yeah. said, let's not forget the rest of the cast. Well, I was going to say, before we get away from the, the Vader <laughs> scene, um, I will say just the fact that it's not he's straight up trying to murder him. He wants <laughs> to inflict revenge pain basically where yes. he stops him he makes him lose his lightsaber and literally drags him through fire as the first step in his revenge um mm -hmm. but yeah we uh i was gonna say obviously we um have so many returning cast members just with the fact that uh the actor that played uncle owen my mind is blanking on his name and i'm not searching him because it's just uncle owen he, we know he burns up later anyway um I'm uh, so glad you got a moment to stand up to the yes. Empire in this, though. Yeah, like, uh, and I, I'm sure we'll get back around to him at some point. Um, but obviously, the the majority of the story is basically taking place with uh, Leia being kidnapped by fucking Flea from yeah. Red Hot Chili Peppers, <laughs> a.k.a. Donnie from the Wild Thornberries. Um, yeah. And then... Uh, because oh man, God, we're gonna go into home so many awesome characters. Um, but the whole focus is obviously trying to get Leia back. Um, Leia was the target because they knew that Leia had or Organa had a connection to Kenobi. Um, mm -hmm. and they're basically just trying to flush him out with, hey, guess what? It worked. Um, my so uh, we're gonna. I'm just gonna 
just randomly throw in random people that one I hope we get more of. Mm-hmm. Kumail Nanjiani's character as a basically actually a really good guy that's trying to make money off of being a good person. He is yeah. in his own way, he is trying to help people, but he doesn't want to do it. You know, he, he makes some money. You gotta make your money. It, Empire sucks. They're making it hard to work. They're, they don't want to pay a livable wage. Um, sounds really <laughs> familiar. Um, <laughs> uh, but when we get to the second episode, we give Kenobi taken to him being like, hey, well, he's a Jedi. He's not a Jedi. He's a fucking, uh, what's that word? My mind's blanking on the term. Swindler. He's a swindler. He's yeah. a con man. Um, but it also, it just plays the Camille Nanjiani strengths as an actor anyway. I love He's him always so played much. the goofy but lovable guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Man, that, it, that lucky... He he's on that list of lucky nerds that now he's in the MCU and in Star Wars. Um, yes. Yeah, Kamel's character is fantastic, uh, and has that when he finally realizes, "Oh, I am I dealt with a Jedi. Let me mm. actually help this man." Kind of thing. He has that character turn, um, and I'm really hoping we get more of him. He didn't die, thank fucking God. Um, we still have three episodes. He might show up. Who knows? It's Star Wars mm. people, they like to keep using the same people over and over again. Except for Watto, where the fuck is Watto? Um, <laughs> I think I think he made all his money finally. <laughs> um, you know, I, they probably were like, "Ooh, we should probably stay away from the Jewish stereotypes." Um, yeah. It's just it would be funny to me if Obi Wan ever runs into Watto again. <laughs> hey, Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> I the scene I want is Anakin going to Tatooine, just murdering him. It's just, like, you fucker! Um, <laughs> crash with a pot racer right to water. <laughs> um, so another fantastic part of this series is that we get the first live action take on the Inquisitors, which were first introduced. I believe they were only first introduced in the Rebels. Uh, I don't. Be- I don't think they were in the Clone Wars. Um, don't they quote me on not. that. Um, I watched the Clone Wars once in like passively, but like enough that I got the story while playing video games because that's how I enjoy dub. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. But no, I uh, uh, we got our first look at the Inquisitors, Grand Inquisitor. People complain about because his head doesn't look like he does in the cartoon. And more confusingly, he isn't dead in Rebels, so he might okay. not be dead in this, even though. The more important of the Inquisitors, uh, Reva, killed mm. him. Um, I'll put it this way: back to tanks or just magic? That's so. true. <laughs> that is true. Um, we'll get around to that for something mm. later too, won't we, Nate? Um, yes. But yeah, we have uh, the Grand Inquisitor, who obviously gets taken out in the second episode, um, as I said, uh, by Reva, who is the is it fourth sister or third sister? Third sister. Third sister. Um, who is also one of the few Inquisitors that I remember having an actual name. Um, mm-hmm. Because most of them are sister or brother. Uh, yeah. Most mm-hmm. famously in Rebels, one of the sisters being played by um, Buffy. I can't remember her name right now. Sarah Michelle Geller, which is fantastic because Sarah Michelle Geller got to fight her real life husband in Star Wars. Um,. Well, it's interesting enough to know because she is a third sister. Yes. The second sister is actually in uh what's the fucking video game in the blanking one? Uh Fallen Order. Jedi Fallen Order, yes. Yes. Um, so I don't know if the numbers are ranking, but maybe. <laughs> I don't know how that works either. I haven't looked into it enough. Um but will what I will say about third sister, uh Reva um, she is played by, oh, I literally pulled it up, and now I can't find her name. Uh, Moses Ingram, who, for the people that don't know, one, is um, the best friend in Queen's Gambit on Netflix. Highly recommend. Great show. Two, from Baltimore. Yeah. So, we support our Baltimore people. Um, you can hear it in her voice. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? You can. You one hundred percent can. She's fantastic. Um, 
she is the one that basically hired Flea. I won't call him anything but Flea because I don't know if he actually has a character name uh, to kidnap Leia um, and sets everything into motion. She's the one that reveals to fucking Kenobi that Anakin's alive, which at this point he didn't know. And <laughs> fucking Kenobi goes like fucks off to, to Tatooine, doesn't learn shit. Everybody else that he knew knows everything, but like mm-hmm. <laughs> he's just in the dark. He's just in a cave. Cutting up some <laughs> random sand meat, whatever. Um, who else? My mind's blanking on other people. Hmm. Bigger characters. Um, oh, what is her name? The actress from again Game of Thrones. You don't know her name. Uh, hmm. Plays a um, a fake Empire employee. I'm just calling them employees because that's what they are. Well, she plays a imperial officer. Um, well, a, again, a fake imperial officer, um, or a, which yeah, is weird to say me because, double agent. Yeah, I mean, imperial officers always have their faces exposed. Mm. So, like, are stormtroopers just that dumb? Yes, <laughs> yes, they are. There were li- there's literally a scene in the third episode where there are four of them sitting mm-hmm. across from fucking Obi Wan Kenobi. And they're like, we're looking for a Jedi. He's like, I have no idea what who, what a Jedi looks like. He's like, oh, I mean, normally they look like exactly what you're wearing, but hey, you're <laughs> stupid. Uh- <laughs> um, they, they fucking bought the whole nickname thing when he accidentally oh calls her God. Leia. I'm S- like... That, that, oh man. Like, the, uh, the idea of <laughs> Star Wars making the, the, the prequel trilogy make you feel things because there is good in the prequel trilogy overall it's not the best um and we've accepted that and we've moved on because we got clone wars and rebels out of it um but that the like when he has those moments with her of like you straight up are just your 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 mother or the moment where she turns him is like are you my dad are you because you seem to be like have these connections with my mom and blah 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 blah, mm-hmm. and it really is like that's fucking heartbreaking. It's like I'm not, but <laughs> I know him. Uh, <laughs> he's actually oh. hey, guess what? He's right there. Do you want to? No, no, you don't want to meet him. Okay, uh, <laughs> it's just one of those things where it it even calls back to the original trilogy where Obi Wan never told Luke that Darth Vader was his dad, <laughs> so. <laughs> That's some bullshit it's, too. It's like, oh, Anakin, Anakin's dead. Your father's yeah. dead. So it's it's that omission of truth kind of lie where it's yeah, yeah your dad's technically dead. That <laughs> man no longer exists. He is now a different man. Mm-hmm. You have to technically kill him. Yeah. <sighs> no, I mean, all that being, if we go back to Reva as an Inquisitor, I think one of the best things that this series in particular does is shows the major flaw that the Empire has within it. Is that everyone's ambition is rewarded to the point that the Empire will end up fighting itself. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it's because, what people seem to forget, is the Empire is controlled by a Sith Lord. <laughs> and oh. the things Sith Lords don't do is have friends. We, so. for- we forgot about one <laughs> one major thing. The entire series starts up um, during Order 66. We see younglings mm-hmm. slain. We see Jedi protecting younglings to the end of, I think it's a group of five that survive. Um, And it's pretty, pretty, unless they're really fucking with us, Mm -hmm. one of them is definitely Reva. Oh, more than likely. Yeah, I mean, if they end up fucking with us and be like, ha we fucked with you. (laughs) Um, So there is part of me that is like, okay, by the end of this six episodes, there is a, a possibility of her turning um Mm -hmm. and i'd be okay with that i mean it it's kind of shitty because it 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 is then Mm -hmm. kind of following what happens in i believe the storyline to battlefront 2 um Mm -hmm. with jimine oh fuck oh i can't remember her name um Mm -hmm. all i can remember is battlefront but (laughs) but yeah uh janita vankar does that sound right? I think so. 
I'm trying to remember who did. That's right. It was Quinlan. Mm. Okay, so mm -hmm. yeah, there's, there's a, a scene. very quick shout mm -hmm. out to Quinlan Voss. Quinlan yes. Voss, is that correct? Yes, Quinlan yeah. Voss, who was a great Jedi Master in his own right. Um, he was really a fucking. He was a fucking badass. He was basically. The whole idea, concept behind Quinlan Voss is what if we took an Apache warrior and gave him lightsabers? 1,000%, <laughs> <So. laughs> yeah. He's even got, like, the face paint and everything on his character. Yeah. Um, and he's, he's a brutal fighter, and in the EU, there is several moments where Quinlan Voss does turn to the dark side. So, really? Yeah. Mm. Oh. Um, so we may have that in store. I don't know if it was just fan service mention or they're actually going to put Quinlan Voss in something in the future. Who knows? But he might just, I mean, but, obviously he has survived or 66, man. Yeah. Can we just talk about, I love the clones. The clones mm -hmm. were very, very good at their job. They like, unlike the, uh, the stormtroopers were good at shooting. They, they could take things down. They were winning. Um, yeah. The fact that they couldn't kill all the Jedi, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, I'll give you a pass. They have magic powers. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, there are a lot more Jedi around than I think anybody <laughs> expected, which is good. We get more stories out of it. Wait, why are you that? Why did you go well, away? With, I mean, the reason the clones are the way they are is the Republic was focused on having a more elite army <laughs> than anything yeah. else. Where the Empire shifted to just strength of numbers. Yeah. Throw enough shit at the wall until you get results. And that's even... There is there is a line with the um, the Imperial officer who is the double agent where she says she joined up because she thought it mm -hmm. was for the good of the people. And then, yeah. obviously... It, and this is... I like that we get that aspect of it. There are people that, you know, obviously we are watching the events unfold in the original prequel trilogy... Um, mm -hmm. we get to see that the Empire was never good. The people yeah. don't know that. The people don't know how how fucked up everything actually is. So they look well, at it as, hey, this could be the chance for a different world. As much as the Jedi is a is sort of a mystery to most people in the Star Wars galaxy, the Sith are a bigger mystery. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason why that is, is at the start of the Old Republic... Nobody left really knew Sith existed. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Sith by that point had completely fallen to disarray. Um, and there were dark side users. There were dark Jedi still around, but no one truly claimed the title of Sith Lord anymore. It wasn't until Plagueis found Palpatine that the sort of idea of reestablishing a Sith order began. Mm -hmm. And, the entire reason that Palpatine, the entire reason we have Inquisitors instead of other apprentices or other Dark Jedi or other Sith is because of something Darth Bane had put in the Sith's sort of code about this rule of two thing. There's always a master, there's always an apprentice, and the apprentice should always be seeking a way to become more powerful and then take the master out. Yeah. The Sith have this sort of rule of strength thing. Um and so the idea is okay, the apprentice kills the master, takes on a new apprentice, and so on and so forth. Um, so the Inquisitors are dark side users, and some of them are even what you may call dark Jedi. And that's what brings it full circle back to Riva is a lot of the Inquisitors are former Jedi. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you actually learn, um, not, uh, you learn a little bit in this, but, um, specific story arcs in Rebels where, uh, you find out that the Inquisitors not only are hunting down the Jedi, but also trying to find any for force sensitive um, yeah. people, mostly children, so they can indoctrinate them from a young age. Um, oh, yeah. Which, I mean, <laughs> hey, it makes sense. Look at <laughs> fucking the world. Um, yeah, I, uh, so overall, with the show, I'm I'm loving it. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we've talked about, in general, Disney TV Star Wars has been great. Um, yeah. I still wish we would have gotten an actual full season of Book of Boba Fett instead of Book of Boba mm -hmm. Fett that turned into Mando 2.5. Um, yes. <laughs> but I, I think this is great. I love, like we talked about, filling in filling in the blanks, learning things in between. Uh, 
I also love the idea of, I would love by the end of this, they won't do it, but I would love by the end of this Obi-Wan being like, fuck, I should have taken her. I should have trained her. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, we, you always already see her, like her just navigating the forest. Mm-mm. She's capable as a child. Um, oh, yeah. Very intelligent as a child. She's not worried about going to get fucking power converters from Tashi Station. Um, <laughs> she, <laughs> uh, and I mean, we that is one of those things where I guess technically you didn't need to because she went on to be the greatest general in the the uh, the Rebel Army. Um, yeah. Well, that's the. I think it's it's this. We have her filling in. We know her role in the overall story. Um, in the sequel trilogy, the kind of retcon that is okay. Well, at a certain point in her life, she did train with Luke yeah. to try to you know learn some Jedi stuff, um, which isn't a totally bad thing in and of itself. No, and um, I'm pretty sure in the original, before it became Legend, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure in the expanded universe that was a thing. Um, yes. I mean, she has to be Force-sensitive. Uh, not just because of who her father is, but because of mm-hmm. we have that in um, in Empire. I believe it's Empire, yeah. where she's like, oh hey, he's well, dangling <laughs> from the bottom of the fucking... <laughs> Here's... Here's the trick that Star Wars likes to play on people with the Force, is that everyone is Force-sensitive. It's just everyone has a different amount of... The power level? Yes, they have a different amount of control over the Force itself. Um, The reason why... Well, no, it's not about Metachlorians, but the reason why people like Darth Vader and Sidious are so powerful is because the dark side is all about controlling the force. Mm -hmm. It's not about recognizing the force as this all encompassing thing. It's about recognizing that, but then trying to basically subjugate it to your will. (laughs) Jedi are more about, of course, letting the force flow through you, not really trying to put your own influence on the force, things like that. But the Jedi also have their own fuck ups. The reason why we deal with the younglings so much is because what people have to understand about the, the way the Jedi Order was built is these children were basically abducted from their homes. <laughs> yeah. Um, we even get a moment about Obi-Wan talking about the fact that he can't really remember his parents. <laughs> he thinks he has a brother. Yes. Yeah. So they're abducted from their home. They're indoctrinated with this stuff their entire lives to basically become, by the time we get to the prequel trilogy, galactic policemen. <laughs> um, and... So they're, they've dealt with that their entire lives. And then when Order 66 comes around, there's no adult Jedi left to train or protect the younglings anymore, at least as far as they're aware. Yeah. And the ones who do reconnect with Jedi Masters usually turn out to be Jedi or sort of follow their own path, like with Ahsoka. But many of them feel abandoned, they feel lost, and the only thing they have a connection to, the only thing that protects them in those trying times, is the Force itself. So, of course, they're going to use it to do some pretty terrible shit during their lifetime, just out of necessity. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that strengthens their connection to the dark side, and that's where we sort of get this idea that Reva may have been a youngling during Order 66 and is now an Inquisitor. Especially the need to... I, the idea of the need to appease Anakin, who she would know was mm-hmm. a Jedi Master. Um yeah. This thing. At the time of the Inquisitors, being Grand Inquisitor is the closest thing you get to being an apprentice of Darth Vader. <laughs> so You're, it's the third in line. You don't get the best yeah. the best benefits or the best pay, but you know, um, mm. if anything happens, well, you might get that in, that. Uh... <laughs> that's the other thing. No one but Anakin really knows Palpatine is a Sith Lord. Anyway, they just see Palpatine as this great politician who established this empire to save yeah. the entire galaxy. That's what they believe. <laughs> At this point, yeah, yeah, we haven't gotten to the evil evil well-known evil kind of shit um no. but yeah like i said big fan loving this excited to see the next couple of weeks uh awesome thing about this upcoming wednesday we get a twofer we get a new kenobi and the premiere episode of miss marvel um yep. which is i think the first time disney's done that with uh marvel in a star wars property going at the same time i might be wrong mm-hmm. um either way i'm fucking pumped um yeah. Well, with a streaming platform, they know people will watch them in their own order at whatever time they want, so they're not concerned about one series overriding another. Oh, yeah, I'm waking up early, and I'm watching Miss Marvel immediately. 
Um, but because I for fucking forgot to put it on the list, Star Wars Celebration happened. Mm. Um, let me star wipe there for a second. Uh, so we got some b- big news, awesome news. Um, we got our first look at Andor the series, um, which is the prequel, basically a prequel series for Rogue One, which is cool. We get to see more of him. He's not the one I care about. I want more K2SO. Um, <laughs> looks great. Looks entertaining. Looks fucked up. Looks like we're going to get a lot of like uh, the more espionage kind of side of Star Wars. Um, mm-hmm. We obviously got tease of Season 3 of Mandalorian, which Kate Sackhoff's character of um, oh my god, I'm horrible with names. What is wrong <laughs> with me? Bo-Katan, uh, who Again, originally started off in, I believe, Clone Wars, into Rebels, and now, obviously, Mando. Um, She is going to be a big part of the season, and it sounds like she's going to be the main antagonist of the season. Um, For obvious reasons. She wants the fucking Darksaber. Darksaber. (laughs) She wants to be the leader of Mandalore. So so I am am really hopeful that we get to go back to Mandalore. and get that finally get that kind of shit going on because that's I love that some of my favorite stuff of Clone Wars was the Mandalorian stuff. Um, oh yeah, well you got a history of this entire culture that just a cool character we remember from the original trilogy came from. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, on top of Mandalorian season three, we also got the <laughs> announcement of a new series called Star Wars Skeleton Crew, uh, which focuses on like a group of young. I don't think younglings, but it is younger characters. Um, mm-hmm. Big name attached to it is Jude Law. So, hey, Jude Law's now MCU in Star Wars as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, on top of that, we also got confirmation of Season 2 or Volume 2 of Star Wars Visions, uh, which, to me, fucking fantastic. I love the first season. I'm really excited about the new one. I hope we get new. I don't want more of the same. Maybe there's a couple of those we've talked about it where we wanted continuations, but I would love for just an entire new set of uh, anime production studios. Mm-hmm. Um, as yeah. well as we got first trailer for season two of Bad Batch. Uh, and one of my favorite things is we got we didn't get a look. They got a look. We don't get to see it because we're not uh, special. We didn't pay money to see it, um, but they showed off some w- of what has been filmed for uh, Ahsoka, um, which people at this point are just calling another season of Star Wars Rebels um, because we got Chopper. Chopper is going to be in it. Um, <laughs> we got the first look of the live action Sabine. Um, I believe there was. A, I think I saw something about. Um, Hera Sandor- Sandula, yeah. yeah, uh, with her and Kanan's son, um, which goddamn that when I read that, I'm like, oh, fuck, <laughs> <laughs> god, Rebel. I'm so excited to rewatch Rebel soon, um, which is gonna take forever because Clone Wars is long, <laughs> uh, but no, I, I'm super fucking excited for all this shit. There's so much good Star Wars that's been announced, um. And, like, after this, obviously, it's... I have faith in Disney Plus Star Wars. Mm -hmm. You've got three good series. Why not? Um, I mean, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. The the move that Disney made to make this happen is giving Star Wars to people with the experience and the talent to make good stuff on screen, but also people who love the absolute fuck out of Star Wars. Well, and that's the... Um, between Favreau, Favreau and um, Filoni, thank you, Filoni. Those two, I, I would, I would trust the entirety of Star Wars to Filoni at this point. Like, no. make him the new George Lucas. Make him, give him Catherine Kennedy's position, or at least like, let Catherine Kennedy be in charge, and Dave Filoni does the foggy shit of putting it all together. Mm-hmm. Um, I realize we've talked so much. I'm about to say fuck it and skip all of our game stuff. Because uh, <laughs> we're already an hour in. Um, but yeah, I, I'm i so excited for everything that's coming down the line for Star Wars. Uh, especially because... Do you, do you know what the next movie planned is? The next release date movie is planned? No, I do not. It's Taika Waititi's 
movie. Really? So the next Star Wars movie we get is Taika. And I can't <laughs> fucking wait for whatever the fuck he's going to make. Uh, <laughs> Star Wars and Technicolor. <laughs> it's going to be incredible. Oh my god, if it looks like uh, the animated Boba Fett mm-hmm. stuff, I'd be all for it. If we get an animated Star Wars movie, awesome. Mm. Alright, so, since we do have a shit ton of news to go through, I'm going to say let's go quick through our gaming stuff. Um, I personally haven't been playing much, obviously. Still mm-hmm. still uh, trying to figure out the good balance between work and, and at-home <laughs> stuff. Um, but I did play a good bit of Soda Dungeon 2, which is a free-to-play, just one of those um, clicker games. Uh, mm-hmm. It's relaxing. It's fun. Um, you literally are like, hey, build up this bar get heroes, fight the Dark Lord, um, mm-hmm. rinse, repeat kind of shit. Uh, it's fun, <clears throat> free, right on Steam there for you. Uh, another technically free, if you are a Game uh, Game Pass subscriber, is Loot River, which, think 2D Dark souls where your progression throughout the world is you are able to shift these floating platforms um, and that can be used to, hey, your platform is on fire, but you can jump onto another platform full of enemies, have that fire lead onto that platform, jump onto another platform, and scoot away while they burn to death. Um, hmm. One of the mechanics of the game. Uh, but it is it is very, like, I, I'd give it more of a Dead Cells kind of vibe because of the, the pixel, pixel style. Um, I love it. I played for, like, couple of hours yesterday didn't get far because i'm horrible at those games i'll eventually get there um <laughs> but it, it is still a uh, a roguelike where it is every time you die the entire world is different you have to find different paths um i highly recommend it and again it is uh on game pass and just because you know we love it we've talked about it enough devolver digital published it so um what you've been playing? You fucking I'm I'm thrown off by this thing that you the first thing you listed here. <laughs> you fucking played Fortnite. So here's the thing about Fortnite is they introduced a couple seasons ago a no build mode, right? Oh, it's great. It's not even. It was just last season, I think. I believe so. It was last season. Well, it's a permanent playlist option now, and so my buddy James, who I play a lot of stuff with wanted to play Fortnite, so I got back into it, and no build is fantastic. It removes the one annoyance I've always had with Fortnite Battle Royale, which is, I shoot someone literally once with, like, a handgun, and the next thing you know, they've built a 50-foot skyscraper around themselves. <laughs> and it, it it's just annoying. It's more controls to deal with. It takes away, at least for me, some of the important things about Battle Royale, which is awareness and positioning. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because it doesn't really matter when you can just build a fortress around yourself in like 30 seconds. Yeah. Um, I forgot I actually gave so, that a shot and got in like third or fourth yeah. place. So it is, it's, it's annoying to me. I have two total wins out of the maybe 25 or so games I've played a Fortnite recently. Um, but... I got back into it, and they just came out with it. I When I tried to log in last night, I got a 2B continued screen, and I was wondering what that was about. Like, it wouldn't let me play the game. You just waited to load into the next season. Yeah, so it was the transition time between the next season, and now we're on Chapter 3, Season 3, which is called Vibin. Um, Vibin? Yeah, it's called Vibin. I heard, I heard that um, The Rock is in it or something, or still around or some shit. I don't know about that. But it's basically the entire island is turned into one big party slash rave kind of deal um they added some cool things to it there's a whole new biome now around what's called the reality tree which i mean just call it the world tree honestly um but you can get saplings from around this tree and you can plant them and what's cool about planting the saplings is they grow between matches so what happens is you'll plant one, and if you come back to the same exact spot during a different match, your sapling is still going to be growing there. And what you can do is pull weeds around the sapling between the matches. Now, you can loot it right away if you want to, and it'll give you some gear. But if you keep it growing between matches and keep weeding it, you can get all the way up to mythic gear from a sapling. <laughs> so it incentivizes players to keep coming back and keep revisiting the same area over and over again between matches. They brought back one of the most fun vehicles in the game called the Baller, which is 
just imagine the sphere things from Jurassic World, but with a grappling hook attached to them. So it feels like you're playing as Hammond in Overwatch, more or less. <laughs> but they also all as added a big ass roller coaster track that goes around the mountain in the center of the map. Really? You can roll things on. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, they added the ability to mount wildlife in the game, so wolves and boars you can now ride on. Um, you can also fight from atop those mounts as well. Do all the same actions you would do on foot. And they added three new weapons. The hammer assault rifle, they added a two-shot shotgun, and they added a new marksman rifle, which is like a DMR-style thing. Um, your wife just put water in your face. <laughs> I, I need water. I also gotta hydrate in chat, so thank you. Yeah. Um, so, you've got some new weapons, and then a bunch of stuff in the season pass. I didn't remember that I was subscribed to Fortnite Crew. <laughs> <laughs> so when I came money? back, I've been paying money. But when I came back <laughs> a couple weeks ago, I had I thousands of V bucks. And Kim says hi. Hi Kim. I had uh, thousands of V bucks. I had all this stuff that I didn't even know I had earned. And with the Fortnite crew, you of course get access to the battle pass as well automatically. Um, the new battle pass. It has some pretty cool characters and rewards in it. Indiana Jones is actually coming to the Battle Pass really? later on. Ooh. When is that so, supposed to be coming? Uh, everything that's upcoming in the Battle Pass is 18 days from now. So the reason so, I ask, this is playing into something mm -hmm. in the future. Um, obviously, this coming weekend we have the Xbox Bethesda showcase. And one of the games... Um, that mm -hmm. people have been wondering about is the fact that there is supposed to be a Bethesda Indiana Jones game. Oh, okay. So I wonder if that is kind of planned around, maybe not super close, but like mm -hmm. the the fact that it's so close to that, I'm very interested. Yeah. I mean, it could be. Well, the, the battle pass itself is capped off. The last reward you're going to get in this battle pass is Darth Vader. Mm. <laughs> so... You get Vader, you get... An oh, that's Imperial right, they're Stormtroopers, Mar right? Yes, there are Stormtroopers already in the game. There's a lot of Star oh, Wars I'm characters already in the game. Fucking play this but, game. Um, you get Darth Vader, you get an Imperial Marsh emote to go along with him, which is really cool. Um, his drop effect is a bunch of TIE fighters flying around him. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so Do, is, his, get, um, is his glider a TIE fighter? His specific it's not a fighter? TIE fighter, it's the Lambda Class shuttle, which is the Tri-Wing. So, okay, that's interesting. Yes. Now, the reason that they Star Wars, the last season, you also got Obi-Wan as well. So, the these characters don't come with lightsabers, um, because lightsabers were a special weapon in a Fortnite event at one point. Mm -hmm. So, they're reserving it for future special events. So, no lightsabers as harvesting tools in the game. But um, you do get some unique stuff to go along with them. With this one, you get an Imperial Sigil, which is just a staff with the Imperial logo on top of it. Um... That being said, Fortnite also now has bonus rewards, so after you complete the battle pass, you can then invest in the bonus rewards where you get basically alternate skins and styles for the stuff you've already yeah. unlocked. Okay. They did change the battle pass where you're not earning things in a linear fashion anymore. You earn five stars every time you gain a level, and then you can spend those stars on whatever is on a page oh, of the battle pass okay. you unlock. That seems so that kind of makes me think of um how crowns worked in uh <laughs> Fall Guys, right. where you could be like, hey, save up the crowns, use these crowns on specific whatever's out right now. Which uh, I, I don't think we ever covered, but with them going to free-to-play, they've completely changed that system. Yep. Well, one of the cool things in the battle... In the last battle pass, one of the cool things is you got a unique harvesting tool, which is basically your melee weapon in the game mm. that you used to break walls and stuff with. Normally it was called the Omni Blade. Well, it was called the Omni Blade. You can earn these things called Omni Chips to unlock further customizations for them. So you unlock different types of blade styles, um, guards for them, colors, sounds, that kind of stuff for this sword. Um, in this one, it's actually a whole character. There's a character you unlock on page one of the battle pass called Snap. And once you unlock them, you get quest to go around the map and collect various parts for Snap. Which has and always been... That, that has been a uh, aspect of Fortnite I've mm -hmm. always liked. They have like different unlockables that are spread throughout the map. Um, that yeah. I've never gotten into, but I, I like the idea of maybe, like, a group of us trying to find all that shit. Yeah. Well, Snap is basically just a Lego man. So <laughs> you um get different parts for him, and you can attach all these different parts to him in unique and wacky custom, wacky sort of custom things. Um, so that's neat. Um, other than that, I mean, Fortnite is still Fortnite at the end of the day. It's still a fun game to play. 
Um, the last sort of chapter had a weapon balancing issue because of the drum shotgun they introduced was just overpowered motherfucker. <laughs> um, That's been a thing with them since the beginning, yeah. so yeah. But um, with the new weapons here, the new the three new weapons that they've added seem fairly balanced and, you know, they they offer different gameplay styles. The hammer assault rifle is just a more powerful assault rifle. Mm-hmm. Um, the two-shot shotgun is interesting because it fills a niche between the ranger shotgun, which only has a single shot but extra long range, and things like the auto shotgun, which you can fire really fast but has a very short range. And then having the DMR gives people that mid-range option between snipers and assault rifles that we haven't really had with the exception of a couple different weapons that were introduced, but were far more difficult and sort of weird to use. Um, So it's just, it's a neat, fun game. I'm having fun playing it. I like playing Battle Royales, really I do. Um, But Even if you get super frustrated sometimes. Yes, but with things like uh, Call of Duty and Attacker Problem, I really can't go back to that. Um, I got What is the current status of PUBG? Do we the know? Current of, I mean, the current status of PUBG is it just it's not really a good game at its core. Yeah. Um, the problem with PUBG is it's always had issues, especially with things like lag comp and hit registration, and so you can't really do a battle royale without decent hit reg. <laughs> um, yeah. and. Also, just not giving you enough feedback for when you're doing damage versus not doing damage. In Fortnite, it's very clear. You get a damage number that pops up over people's heads when you hit them. Yeah. In PUBG, you got, like, a blood splatter, and if you were far enough away, you just couldn't even see it in the first place. So, I get that people like PUBG because they feel it's more realistic, quote-unquote. But Fortnite is just fun it's, at the end of the day. So, I want to... We've talked about in the past that I have been re-listening to older episodes. I recently listened to an episode where we were talking about the early, early beginnings of Fortnite, where mm-hmm. people were starting to come after Fortnite to be like, oh, you're just copying PUBG. And then we went into the whole battle battle royale has been a thing for, for fuck, fucking forever, so shut up. Um <laughs> But this was at a point where we were like, PUBG has this many users. Fortnite has this many users. PUBG is obviously winning out. This was so long ago that Fortnite was still under PUBG in popularity. Um, and we all... I, you, Dave, let's be honest, it was Dave. Dave was very against Fortnite. Um Mm. And the fact that so much has changed since then, like, in terms of the popularity of Fortnite. Fortnite has not, has dropped, I'm sure, a little bit, but nowhere near as much as PUBG's fucking just dive off a cliff. Um, And it's so funny to hear, like, oh, PUBG sucks now. Um, Well, like I said, Fortnite is just a fun game. And it's fun in more ways than just being a decent Battle Royale game. I mean... There are times where, like, I'm sitting in a lobby with friends, and we've unlocked emotes, and we're having fun showing those off to each other yeah. and having fun doing them together. There's times where we're in a lobby, and, like, we're doing one emote, and then a random person just comes up and does the same thing in front of us, and yeah. so we're all just synced up. Um, and you get these sort of unique sort of social moments when you're just kind of hanging out in the game that you don't get from games like PUBG. That being said, I can also see shit in Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> PUBG. PUBG, PUBG falls into that is, everything's the same color. Everything almost. is a shade of brown and gray yeah. in PUBG, and that's all you get. So <laughs> it's the Gears of War logic. And Fortnite also doesn't make me pay. It doesn't make me pay money, but it doesn't make me pay a ridiculous amount of money to unlock character customizations that I want. Yeah. PUBG very much got into loot box gambling kind of stuff, and even let people at a point sell their loot boxes to other people. So, oh my god, I didn't know was, that was a thing. It was becoming basically just a haven for people who wanted to gamble and find a way to make a quick buck off a video game. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I'm enjoying it. I mean, forget everything in the past I may have said about Fortnite at this point. If you like Battle Royales, it's a game worth playing, especially on no-build mode. Um, so yeah, just check it out, I guess. It's the beginning of a new season, so you've got really nothing to lose at this point. Yeah. All right, so you have also been into the simulator <laughs> world. I have. So there's a channel that I love on YouTube called Let's Game It Out, and it's this guy, Josh, who plays a lot of simulator games, but he also plays some simulator games, not with the intent of like showing off tips or how to like get ahead in the simulator game, but with the intent of destroying 
everything and causing as much chaos as humanly possible. <laughs> sounds like my kind of my kind of channel. Well, yeah. For example, um, one of the games he plays, and one of the games that I want to try, is Hydraneer. And Hydraneer is a mining game where you start out with a plot of land, and you basically mine it for minerals. You dig up dirt, you pan the dirt, and rinse it out, and you get different mineral stuff like that. And later on, you can get machines and stuff to sort of automate that process. This looks like a lower budget um, satisfactory. Yeah, it kind of is. <laughs> um, but it's focused strictly around mining, where satisfactory is exploration and things like that. Yeah. Um, what he did, his last video on this, and he doesn't release them that frequently, but the last video, I, I crack up every time I watch this guy. One of the updates, they released explosives into the game. Everything oh, from God. a single stick of dynamite up to mini nukes. <laughs> oh, God. And because he's found several different ways through just breaking this game of how to make a ton of money really fast, he always starts out that way. And he bought so many mini nukes and just shoved them into a hole that <laughs> when he detonated, um, you see the frame rate already starting to slow down almost immediately, down to like one frame a second frame rate. Mm -hmm. The game crashes and his computer crashes. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> so he reboots everything and resumes the game, but He's done things like that. He's done wacky stuff in Planet Coaster, where his only real goal at the end of the day is to put people on like these torturous journeys through an impossible to get through theme park, and then also to make them like as sick as humanly possible. <laughs> um, so he's done things like that. He's just a hilarious guy. And the thing that I like about simulator games is I do like playing them the way they're meant to be played. But when I don't want to do that, I'll just save the game and just start wrecking shop. And <laughs> um, one of the unique. One of the ones I played that I didn't even expect to like is Farming Simulator 22. Um, and it can be, if you play it the way it's meant to be played, it's going to sound like it's a boring game. Because when they say Farming Simulator, they do mean we are simulating what it means to actually farm crops. Yeah, I've played <laughs> older versions, and it's it's just <laughs> not fun. I cannot get into that shit at all. Well, one of the new things they added to this game, though, was production chains. So what you can do is you can set things up. For example, instead of saying, okay, I harvested a bunch of canola, and now I want to turn that into canola oil. Well, there's no way to do that. You would just sell the raw canola. Well, I can actually literally buy and build a canola oil factory on any piece of land I own, deliver all my canola there. They can produce canola oil, and I can sell that for even more profit than just the base canola itself. Um... And you can set up these massive production chains all across the map by buying more land from other farmers and just going completely crazy with it. There's even an achievement in the game for buying all of the fields on a single map. <laughs> um, <laughs> that being said, they've also added other tools. Your plow now can, if you buy a plow, normally you just have a regular cultivator, but if you buy a plow which digs deeper, you can actually use it to combine fields together if you want to. Hmm. Um that being said, they've added also a lot of assist in this game, from being able to change how fast time moves, to being able to change how long a month is in the game, to also being able to turn off some of the more annoying aspects of the game. For example, if you don't want to, every three harvest, you don't want to apply lime to your fields, you can just turn that off. Hmm. If you don't want to ever use rolling on your fields, you can turn that off. If you don't want to have to weed your fields, you can turn that off. So you can turn a bunch of stuff off to make the game easier for you to get in at the beginning, and then gradually turn that stuff back on if you want more of a challenge later on, and use more of the tools. You also have contracts in the game where a farmer on your map will give you work to go do in a specific field. And the unique thing about the contracts is you can use the own tools you have at your disposal, or you can just lease the tools from the shop. And this gives you a way of saying, hey, the tutorial told me what that tool does, but I've never actually seen how it works. So you just go and do the job for somebody else, and you immediately have an understanding of how that tool works. <laughs> like, I had no idea what a tether actually did before I used one on somebody else's field. And it just flips grass over to dry it out. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's a game that I normally play after I'm done sweating my ass off in Fortnite for several hours <laughs> because it's just a chill game. You can even hire AI workers to do some of the work for you. You pay the oh, money to nice. do it, but you can jump in one of your tractors and attach a tool to it, drive it over to a field, and say you want that field cultivated, but you don't want to drag that cultivator through your field the 15 or so times it takes to make that happen. You just press a B on your controller, and an AI worker will take over that job for you. And since I've only got three fields, I rotate between two AI workers and myself, all doing a job on different fields, and that speeds up the process immensely. Um, 
But that being said, it's a chill game if you really are into farming, if you're one of those people and really want to learn how farming works. <laughs> there are, believe it or not, there are YouTube channels centered around Farming Simulator for some reason. Um, you can go ahead and play it that way. The other simulator game I played in there has been out for a long time. I tried it a couple of times, never really got into it, but it's Cooking Simulator. And I got back into it because I do like cooking in the real world. But Cooking Simulator is also a game where you can make a lot of mistakes and get into a lot of goofy shenanigans without realizing yeah. it. I just built so much soup on my kitchen floor. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, I mean, it's fun in its own right, and it's a game that lets me sort of challenge my ability to time and organize things. Um, and so... I've only gotten up to, like, day three in my main save file, but I'm having a blast playing it, and, I'm, and it's really satisfying when you get a dish right and you get five stars on that dish. <laughs> so, to me, it's just a fun thing. And this is just a try. regular regular game. It's not a VR game. You don't have VR, correct? I don't have VR, but Cooking okay. Simulator does have a VR version available. Ooh, okay. So, you can go around with as two disembodied hands cooking things. <laughs> that sounds fun. But, uh, yes, it does have a VR version, and the VR version, you know, gives you that extra level of immersion and control over what you're doing, <laughs> but, of course, it's VR, so it also makes it that much harder to play sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's just fun game. I'm, fun games I'm having a good time playing cool. recently. <laughs> All right, Nate. <laughs> so much. This is a long fucking episode. I'm going to try yes. and get through so much of this as fast as possible. First of all, Aaron. the dumbest shit on the planet. Um, <laughs> Morbius is a enjoyable movie that's horrible. Um, yes. The internet has memed it so hard that Sony was dumb enough to put it back into a thousand theaters, uh, which resulted in it making, uh, I believe on Friday, $85,000, yes. <laughs> which is less than, uh, I believe, the, the most recent um, Harry Potter movie. That also mm -hmm. didn't isn't doing. I mean, it's been out for months now. Um, wow, what the fuck? Uh, I made a joke tweet the other day where I'm like, "What are are we trying to get them to just spend the money to realize that they've lost so much money that they need to sell Spider Man to Marvel?" Um, <laughs> fingers crossed. I mean, um, to put this into perspective, you release a movie in a thousand theaters, God, you only gross eighty five thousand dollars. That means you made eight hundred and fifty bucks per theater you put it in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's fucking sad. Um, and then compare that to Top Gun Maverick, which released on the same weekend. That movie grossed $25 million on which, Friday. Which, according um, to Kim and Becca, is a great movie. Um, I won't see it. I have no interest. Uh, <clears throat> Star Wars, back on Star Wars, and we were talking about Back <clears throat> to Thanks, um, announced and showed off the first trailer for Star Wars Jedi Survivor, the sequel to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, right? Yeah. Yes, we're um, continuing this saga of Cal Kestis. Hey, hey, and BD. Um, yes, and <laughs> uh, Interested? I I hate it because it's not my kind of game. I don't like, we've talked about this, I'm not a Soulsborne kind of guy. Um, but I want to know the story, and I'm excited to hear more of the story. Um, and we have an unknown possible Jedi that's just floating around in a back to tank. Uh yeah. He's got no bottom half. I think he's missing an arm. I don't fucking know. Um, <laughs> looks cool. No gameplay. I don't believe any gameplay yet. Um, no gameplay with turn off, but we're and is still it, dealing with is it a very 2023 release date, I believe? I believe it's a 2023 release yeah. date. Yeah. And even if you don't like Soulsborne games, this combines Soulsborne with Metroidvania, at least the first game did, very yeah. well. Um, in it tells Star Wars. A compelling story. <laughs> and Star Wars, yes. It tells a compelling story. Um, gives you a whole new Jedi in the canon to deal with, and um, even if you don't like Soulsborne games, I'll say I don't like Soulsborne games, but this one I really, really enjoyed and just kept yeah. playing. Because the punishment on death isn't as severe as other Soulsborne games, and it does have difficulty selection, so and this you don't have to also... play it on dick puncher mode. Yeah, so. <laughs> uh, this is also by the um, developer of the Titanfall games, correct? Yes. Yeah. It's by Respawn Entertainment. Yeah. So, um, Which it also you definitely is, see in the wall running. <laughs> yes. Well, as as terrible of a company as publisher as EA is, it is giving EA, EA is sort of showing that they are willing to invest in these studios that they mm -hmm. bought into also making story 
driven single player titles instead yeah. of just we need more multiplayer stuff because we need to drive microtransactions. Well, I mean, <laughs> Respawn also does um, Apex Legends, so I think they got that covered too. They're like, hey, you're making us a shit ton of money off of Apex. Go ahead, do your thing. Yes. Well, um, it's if it's anything like the first game, it's still going to be very great. I'm excited to see new gameplay and new features on it. I'd like to see more fluidity to the combat than the first game had. That would be really neat yeah. to go forward with. Um. And what's being this said, other thing? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Well, moving on to the other thing. Um, so, people who have listened to our channel recently know that I am a big 40K fan. I enjoy the lore of 40K. I enjoy the aesthetic of 40K. I even have 40K models that I'm still working on painting. And the YouTube video of me actually painting one will be out soon. <laughs> um, okay. But uh, 40K is also bigger than most people think in the realm of video games um there's actually a 40k sale going on on steam right now um actually just a whole warhammer sale going on on steam right now that being said uh the big project that 40k had teased was they're doing space marine 2 and even people who didn't know what 40k was love the original space marine game well they're coming out with a side project called 40k bolt gun now to give you an idea of what a bolt gun is Space Marines in the 40k universe and some others use weapons which are referred to as bolters or bolt guns. And if you see them on the tabletop or in any 40k lore, they just look like your basic chonky assault rifle, right? That's not what they fucking are. <laughs> um, they launch ammunition that is rocket repelled, like a gyrojet basically, that has a diamond tip or a substance very close to the hardness of diamond that also has explosive charge inside of it and is an inch in diameter. <laughs> These things are designed to basically pierce through armor and blow a target apart from inside out. That's how ridiculous the universe of 40k is. That human beings need this weapon to fight anything else that they're going up against most of the time. Um, 40k bolt gun takes that and turns that into classic Doom. <laughs> so okay. it is a classic Doom game with a bunch of different weapons from 40k lore. And that's really all it is. That's all I could really say about it, because there's nothing else to it. It's classic Doom in 40K. And that's all you, all you get out of it. It looks amazing. They even hired, like, a metal composer to do, like, classic 8-bit digital music for it. Like, digital metal music for it. Mm -hmm. So, it's going to stick very close to its, you know, inspiration, which is classic Doom. But it's not Doom Eternal. It's not Doom 2016. It is classic Doom in 40K. And... I don't know. I think it'll at least be a neat and fun thing to play for people who enjoy the aesthetic of 40k, but you know, also love Doom. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, that sounds fun. 40k Doom. Uh, I might if it's uh if it ever ends up on Game Pass, I might check it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So obviously, there's a one smaller thing and then two bigger things. One much mm -hmm. bigger than the other. Um. But, hey, we got our first, IG, it's IGN, sorry, IGN got our first look at uh, Sonic Frontiers, the new upcoming open world uh, Sonic game. Um, mm -hmm. What I have taken from it, uh, they've done some regular general gameplay of, like, traversing the worlds, uh, or the world that we've seen, uh, and then combat. It's very pretty. I like the look of it. Um... I enjoy the the combat. The combat seems interesting and different from anything in the in past Sonic games. Much more like actual fighting instead of just hey jump on this guy. Um, there's like puzzles set up throughout the world, uh, which make me think of the Korok puzzles throughout Breath of the Wild. Um, but overall, from what we've seen. I'm not sure if the world that they showed is like the actual end game of what's coming out or if mm -hmm. it was, hey, this is what we're showing as like the demo first look world because um, <laughs> it feels very empty in almost like the test world kind of thing. Um, like I'm really interested in this fucking game and I want to check it out, but it seems I, I'm really hoping we actually get an actual mm. game, like, yeah. hey, here's a level one, or here's world one kind of playthrough. Mm. Um, because it just seems 
d- d- I guess demoy testing. Yeah, I have it saying testing area. It just seems off. It does seem like a test environment. Um, the only thing I can really say about the look of the test environment is, and this goes out to anyone who works on open world games, please stop making your maps look like the silent cartographer from Halo. <laughs> Oh, and that goes up to Halo as it well. It really does. Yes, and that goes up to Halo as well because you know what you did with Infinite. So made just... one giant silent cartographer level. <laughs> yes, like please stop making. Your... I get the idea of okay, there's nature here in a forgotten world and also hidden technology. I get the appeal of that, but do it in a different style for the yeah. love of God. Yeah. <laughs> and also, I guess to the people working on this game, please make Sonic faster. He moves far too slow in this. <laughs> I will say, so I think we talked about it. I think you actually stopped by my house after um, I was watching something about Sonic animation. And mm. it the the new game does play into um, the multi-step process of like starting at the, the slow walk to the jog to the your arms are swinging, mm. going faster to the arms Naruto style. Um, yes. <clears throat> and I like that. I like the look of it, but it it doesn't seem fast. You still don't feel like you're moving super fast. Well, Un- unless you're, like, grinding on a rail. Yes. It's that Sonic Adventure type of speed, right? Yeah. But in Sonic Adventure, you had these cool linear levels where you really got to unleash that speed you were looking for. Yeah. Um, and that's what I'm hoping they at least introduce in this game. Really, I would say to any developer <laughs> who works on the Sonic game from now on, take inspiration from Sonic Adventure because people love those fucking games. Even though they're broken and janky as shit. Yes. Even though they're broken and janky, reduce some of that brokenness and jankiness. I'm looking at you fucking Sonic colors. Um, and <laughs> They patched it. <laughs> and we're not in the world where we have to deal with loading screens or anything like that anymore, so you can get rid of all that crap. Sonic Adventure 2 had the worst fucking loading screens of all time. Um... So, you know, just take inspiration from that, because that is what brought Sonic into the realm of 3D and into the future. <laughs> um, and just just move forward with it, and you'll have a good Sonic game at the end of the day. Yeah. And I guess hire better writers, too. Please, Ooh. hire better writers. Yeah. <laughs> Looking at you, Sonic and the Black Knight. Um, so we'll see. But... <laughs> we'll see how Sonic Frontiers ends up. Um, it's already... There's already fan campaigns. It just public outcry of, hey... Fucking delay this shit. Do not try and put this out at your original date. Um, <laughs> and I mean, hey, if we got them to change the movie, why can't we get them to change the game? Um, <laughs> uh, moving on, though, to one of my most excited games coming out. Um, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We got a new trailer for showing out, a, showing off a lot more um, of the what they are calling a fully open world where we mm-hmm. will be able to explore and take on the gyms in whatever fucking order we want. Um, which is really interesting, and I'm excited to see how that works. Because, I mean, like, even in the past, it's been very much like, hey, this gym helps you build mm-hmm. up to, like, hey, now you can you know you, what to do to take on this, the blah, 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 blah. Um, so it's interesting to think of it more of, like, again, I hate to say Breath of the Wild, but it is... Breath of the mm-hmm. Wild open lets you do whatever in whatever order. Um, yeah. There is a quote in the trailer uh, that basically says <laughs> they haven't confirmed it. And it's confusing because, again, we don't have enough information on this game. There's a possibility you might be getting all three starters, whether it be just early on in game <laughs> and you have to make a choice at some point. But there is a, a quote in the trailer saying, are you these three's trainer? Um, mm-hmm. specifically talking about Foycoco, Quaxley, and uh, Sprigati? Sprigatito. Sprigatito. Yeah. Weed Cat. Um, I would be happy to have all three starters, because it takes me back to the days of red, ver- red and blue and gold and silver, where you would pick a starter, your rider would pick a starter, and then there's one just abandoned Pokemon left oh, on guy. the table forever. Um, <laughs> well, because I... In, in, uh, like... My mind always goes to Pokemon Yellow, where, yes, you start out with Pikachu. You basically play as Ash. You get Pikachu, Mm -hmm. and then you eventually get all three of the starter Pokemon as well. Um, Yes. And that seems really fun, and I like the idea. And if not, at least make it so you can actually fucking get the Pokemon. Because, hey, guess what? These aren't the only two other... The the only versions of these fucking starters. They should Mm -hmm. still exist in this goddamn world. 
Um, well, that was always a weird thing about the OG Pokemon games is Professor Oak gave you no inkling that the Pokemon he was giving to you as starters were, like, rare, right? But then yeah. you slowly come to realize throughout playing the game, these are the only Pokemon of this species in the entire world right oh, now. No, no, there are no other uh, Charmanders <laughs> in Bulbasaur because, you know, I always had Squirtle. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, they showed off uh, what looks like improved character creation, uh, and by that I mean more than one hairstyle. Because um, <laughs> in mo more recent games, they basically gave you the boy and girl with four different skin colors. <laughs> yeah. um, and then literally one hair haircut. Uh, mm -hmm. And from what we've seen in the trailer, it looks like there might be a little bit more diversity to that, which would be nice. Um, you know, it's only been fucking 25 years. Um, mm -hmm. But with that comes also multiplayer, which, again, not much information besides the fact that you can play up to four friends, play in mm -hmm. the same world up to four friends. Um, if that That's means... actually a feature that may bring me back to Pokemon if it's online play. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know how it works. It looks like that you can like quickly trade with people and all that kind of stuff. Um, I there's part of me that still really wants them to bring back the Wonder Train or Wonder Trade system because um, I like just throwing out my bullshit Pokemon and getting cool things in return. <laughs> A billion Bidoofs in Wonder Trade. <laughs> um, one thing that we're getting, obviously, we're used to certain Pokemon being type exclusive, uh, including later on in the games, um, the legendaries. Uh, we are getting different professors depending on the game. And as I have them listed, you have a uh, hot cave woman who has fangs, and uh, in that's in Scarlet, and Violet gets hot future man. Uh, <laughs> currently, the theory is that they are most likely, just based on their looks, um, they're possibly the villains of the titles. Um, mm -hmm. I put it here, as we know in many <laughs> anime, hot equals evil. Um... <laughs> Uh, but with that, obviously, you have the futuristic guy in Violet in the Cavewoman, obviously, <coughs> past version um, mm -hmm. for the other professor in Scarlet. Uh, there seems to be a past and future theme going on, including with the legendary names that it's Coridon and Maridon, which the first parts of those names mean future and mm -hmm. technically Mar past, but it's like time yeah. in in memoriam or some yeah. shit like that. Well, Mirai does mean future, so... <laughs> yeah, Karida, Karai is the, the time mm -hmm. in memoriam, which is, hey, it's so old that we don't have recorded time of it, or recording yes. of it. Um, well, you already know which one I'm getting, so... Which one are you getting? I actually don't know. <laughs> Scarlet. Okay, good. For Hot Fang Woman? For Hot Cave Woman, yes. Okay, cool, 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 cool. I'm getting um, Violet, because <laughs> I, I want... <laughs> I want. It's not even that. I fucking. I'll admit when they showed off the professor for Scarlet, I'm like, oh fuck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll take. I'll take the Silver Fox Professor. Uh, but no. Um, one, Violet looks cooler. Two, um, I like future. Uh, the future mm -hmm. legendary more. Um, even though people have been pointing out, he kind of looks like a dick. Uh, have you seen those pictures yet? Yes, I okay, have. Good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I'm excited. I, I I have played since the Switch. I have gotten and played every Pokemon game they put out. Um, yes. There was a good chunk of the, the handhelds that I stopped just because, again, old eyes. I'm an old man. It hurts to look at a tiny screen. Um, so these are basically Chinese dragons in Pokemon style. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> another thing, we've got two new Pokemon. Um, I think just two. Mm -hmm. right, just yes. Two? Let me just, I'm like double checking through my mind. Yeah. Um, we got Lechonk, who is a little pig dude. And Smoliv, mm -hmm. who is literally just a small olive. And I say small <laughs> olive, technically he's a giant olive, if you think about it. Yeah. He's um, a giant, but he's also just the most boy. adorable. He's so sad all the time. And it's funny, because I was looking this up earlier, and I remember seeing it on Facebook, and did not know this was a product I could actually purchase. Small? But it is. 
not small. I mean, people have made small of plushies. You can go on Etsy and find a million people crocheting and making plushies of small of. But one of the best things ever is an artist made a design for small of garden. And you can now buy this on a t-shirt. <laughs> so it's small of garden with a little crying, nervous small of. And Please it says send that to me because Kim was gonna, Kim was gonna <laughs> want that. And it says when you're here, you're small. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the podcast chat for you. <laughs> okay. So the last thing that I want to mention about what we got in this trailer, because um, it really was just a trailer. It wasn't like a Pokemon Direct or anything like that. Um, Cool thing. Toby Fox from Undertale in Deltarune has composed the field music along with a couple of other songs that will be in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, in the trailer, you get a little bit of that in there. Um, but as somebody that doesn't like the game of Undertale, but the music is fucking awesome, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. I'm excited. I love that. We've. I think he's done some in the past. Um, I think it was uh, he did the... Did some Smash Brothers Pokemon music, I believe. Um, mm. So I'm excited to see, or hear, see, hear that in the future. Um, that'll be later this year. Uh, but hey, enough of that. On to the main, the main thing that happened. We are officially in, and have already begun, not E3 season. Um, yes. Which, by the way, hey, guess what? Starting Thursday, you can come out and check out, check us out online, doing that fun stuff, covering that live. Uh, <laughs> but this past Thursday, we got the <laughs> Summer Game Fest State of Play. It really was like a, a Summer Game Fest official uh, PlayStation stream, um, which covered a good bit of games and some things that I am extremely excited about. Um so we're just going to run through all this fun shit. I'm actually going to cover the the quick things at the bottom. I just realized that. And then come back to everything else. Ooh, what the fuck did I just do? Um, so obviously we got PSVR 2 coming out soon. Soonish. Uh, with that, they announced some, or confirmed, I guess, some titles that are coming, including the Resident Evil 7 port, um, mm -hmm. the No Man's Sky port, uh, chapter two of Walking Dead: Satan Sinners, which I've heard good things about. I've seen some videos. It looks, it actually does look really fun. Uh, mm -hmm. And the side series, side game of Horizon, uh, Horizon Call of the Mountain, which you do not play as the main character Alloy, um, but you do meet her at one point, from what I've read. Uh, mm -hmm. It looks fun. Um, looks like a lot of exploration. You get to climb mountains and shit. Um, you literally build things by actually like wrapping things around pieces of other I don't know, fucking games are weird. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, we got some indie games, uh, including most importantly, in my opinion, the Tunic port, because people now on PlayStation get to play Tunic, which if you haven't, it's fantastic. It's on Game Pass. Um, Season, a letter to the future, with which we've seen a little bit before, I believe. Uh, basically, you play as a a um, person that is exploring and interacting with these people, um, taking pictures, learning, supposedly to do something with the future, like to save the future or some shit. I don't 100% know. It's It looks like I'm going to cry by the end of the game. That's what the game looks like. <laughs> um, Eternites, which is... <laughs> it's, it's both a action anime-esque game mm -hmm. while also being a dating sim <laughs> <laughs> so straight up your alley right i mean absolutely uh, there's i think there's a you, screenshot you give me an otome where i can fight people in it i'm ready <laughs> there, there's a screenshot of like hitting all right bumper to hold hands uh, <laughs> hey man <laughs> That's the one thing that's missing from all romance games is quick time events. There you go. <laughs> uh, and the last one that they announced, um, which seems really fucking weird. Um, so think of, do you remember uh, My Name is Pedro? Not my, yeah. Is it My Name is Pedro? Yeah. Um, my friend Pedro. I don't fucking remember. Um, mm -hmm. Where you're like running around, jumping around, shooting all that shit. We'll mix that with Tony Hawk Pro Skater, but on rollerblades. Mm. And you get Roller Drone. 
which is a game it, I don't think anybody expected, and it looks no. incredible. Are you pulling it up and checking it out now? I'm looking at it. Okay. I enjoy it that they're doing a cell shaded art style in it. It looks really cool. Yeah. Um, um, it's like Jet Set Radio with guns. It's fucking <laughs> awesome. I love it. Uh, I'm very excited to check that out. Hopefully, I don't know if that one was coming to PC as well. Most likely it is. Um, in all honesty, just about everything that PlayStation announced is coming to other things besides PlayStation, except for one thing. Um, I'll actually probably end up enjoying this more than my friend Pedro, because my friend Pedro, don't get me wrong, it's a fun game, mm -hmm. but the control scheme makes it really difficult to play well. <laughs> yeah, especially later on when you have <laughs> multiple things. I love the way you can like throw a pot, hit the pot, and like ricochet bullets around. That was awesome. But, yes. yeah. Um, but yeah, some cool stuff like that. Uh, I'm going through the smaller things, so ignore the fact that none of this is in order on the list. Um, <laughs> we got a date for Stray, which is the game where you play as a cat with in a world of robots. Mm -hmm. Did we get any more information about how that game plays? God, no, but we're still a cute fucking cat in a that world of robots. Been teased for so long. <laughs> 2020. First, te first tease was 2020. Um, so not too, too long. Uh, but yeah, that'll be coming out July 19th. It is also coming to PC, which means I get to play as a cat in a world of robots. <laughs> <laughs> um, big thing for not so much me, maybe not even you. I wish we could get Dave on this shit because fucking Street Fighter 6 looks good. Mm -mm. Um, I don't remember if they put a date. I don't have it typed down, so most likely no. Uh, but we got some gameplay. Uh online you can find that it has been confirmed for both xbox and pc as well thankfully because i believe street fighter 5 was initially playstation only correct yes yeah um but in the gameplay we got uh they announced real-time commentary feature which seems interesting um i don't know how that works i feel like that's something i mean we've had that in uh we've had Madden. it in sports it was forever. A sports cycle forever and yeah while the commentary is interesting and neat to have, the thing is, is you get to a point where a lot of the lines are just recycled. Yeah. So, um, they introduced uh, the a new drive system, which is basically this game's version. Because I know they're in the more recent versions, there were other drive, or not drive gauge, but a gauge where you could do special attacks. Um, in this case, it's you perform five techniques to enhance either your offense or defense. Um, mm -hmm. Something I like hitting things um something i like is they obviously classic uh six button layout is still sticking around but they're also introducing a modern system that simplifies certain aspects uh including the drive parry in throwing uh it's mm -hmm. kind of the way i looked at it is it, it makes me think of uh blaze blue um mm -hmm. where there were the specials that you could do the input for or you could just literally hit a button and it would do the special for you um yeah. And as somebody that sucks at uh, fighters, um, I like that. I like the idea of that. Um, I mean, I'm pretty fucking bad at them, too. And the one thing I can never pull off consistently ever in Street Fighter, everyone claims to me it's a super simple move to do. Hadouken? On a controller. No, a Hadouken is easy. I mean, quarter circles are simple and easy to figure out. It's fucking sure you can I can't do. Oh. Because no matter how many times I believe I am drawing a Z... Well, on the controller, apparently I'm not doing that, so... <laughs> which is really weird, because I can do it perfectly in games like Skate, which literally tracks all your joystick movements, so... <laughs> yeah. But I just can't seem to do it in this game, and I'm glad that they have this, because it's a way of getting people who may have always wanted to try a complex fighting game like Street Fighter, um, but maybe felt that they couldn't do those combos, or didn't want to really put in a ton of work to learn those combos. Um... It gives them a way to introduce them into Street Fighter and still have fun with the game, just in a simplified fashion. And I guess a good way they could really go for online play is this: is separating those classic players and modern players into two separate pools. So there's no complaints from the classic players that the modern players are whooping their ass because it's just too easy to pull off special moves all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, on top of that, they also showed a little bit of the battle hub, which is mostly just a venue for online matches. Uh, but they also talked about World Tour, which is more of a um, a, a story mode where it's not just your normal one-on-one -on -one fights. Um, it looks like it's more you are actually exploring the world of Street Fighter, uh, which seems really interesting. I'm excited to see what that's about. Um, 
that that kind of draws me. I've never had any draw to a, a Street Fighter game, but the idea of putting that kind of aspect into it seems interesting. Um, and the last thing is, uh, if you remember, the original Street Fighter logo for six was fucking horrible. It was just like an octagon with SF and a number six down the corner. Uh, they yeah. updated it to <laughs> this fun shit. Mm-hmm. Let's see if we get that to play over from the beginning. Um, oh, why are you not? Why do you want to be a piece of shit right now? How did you go from playing to not playing? Yeah. Uh, my favorite thing about this logo is literally just the fact that at the beginning it is six V I six, and then mm-hmm. when it connects, it does the ba boom turns to the six i i love that i don't care what anybody says that shit's fucking cool um well i think what people were missing was sort of the the original street fighter always had this sort of street art font that went with it and that's kind of missing from the new logo even in the newest iteration of it it's kind of missing from that but you do get the graffiti on the logo itself um things like that but then again street fighter was never you know really a street art or hip hop influenced game in the first place. Yeah. So that was the Def Jam game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um so yeah, I weirdly excited about Street Fighter. Um they ended, man, I am <laughs> you're I'm obviously leading up to what I think is the best thing. I don't fucking mm. care what everybody else in the world thinks. Um the end of the presentation ended on uh a new look or more in-depth look of Final Fantasy 16? X- yeah, XBI. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we already knew about it, but it's definitely no more steampunky. It is back to that medieval fi- fi- fantasy like we talked about earlier. I told you, pin in it. Um, <laughs> no more magic tech stuff. <laughs> it's um, <laughs> it's going to be back it, or still in that more modern combat style that they've shown off you've seen recently in obviously Kingdom Hearts in general but uh, Mm -hmm. Final Fantasy 7 Remake which again makes me interested Um, Mm -hmm. and from what they've shown off uh, it will involve combat against the I put in here giant creatures of the universe the summons the summons that people have known Ifrit, Bahamut, Odin um, my mind's there's one yeah, Shiva. That's the one. I know. I'm like, I know there's one in there. Uh, it's funny though because the music in the game or the trailer, it it was like this is 100 percent one winged angel bullshit. Where it's like mm-hmm. they literally <laughs> in the song, it's just them list saying the names of the characters. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, I'm used to this. Um, <laughs> it looks great. Uh, I love the idea of going back to the medieval setting. I like the steampunky kind of shit, but like, mm-hmm. I feel like we've had four well, games of that at this point they keep trying to do this thing where it's this with final fantasy if we go back to like 13 13 was very much more futuristic style than most final fantasy games so it was almost a cyberpunky esque kind of thing with some fantasy elements thrown Is, in. which one's the one with the boy band was that 13 that's final fantasy 15 fuck i don't remember there's too many yeah. goddamn final so, fantasies yes yeah. 15 was the boy band. Um, 15 tried to bridge this line between... It's sort of like they have an industrialized world, basically. Yeah. Um, You know, there's big cities and factories and stuff like that, so more akin to what the aesthetic you saw in Final Fantasy VII, but then also these big areas full of nature and, you know, all kinds of things like that. Um, The technology in the game was literally called Magitech, and it was this idea that you could take the magic that exists in the world, combine it with technology to make weapons, more or less. Yeah. Um, so you had that, but then you also still had just the base level magic and the special unique magic that was unique to Noctis and that kind of stuff. So um, you had a lot of that. The The summons in the game were rumored to, they were, I think, what called Titans in Final Fantasy XV. They were just part of the world's lore. I do remember that, uh, yeah. Um, very powerful creatures that even to summon, you basically had to go through a trial and earn the respect of in the first place. So, a lot of crazy stuff in there, but I'm I am glad, like you are, that they're going back to a more medieval approach to the game. Um, I would like to see just basically high fantasy in my Final Fantasy. I want to see you know knights and armor and swords and princesses and mages and shit like that. Kind of where we started <laughs> off with the series, yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I, it looked great. Um, it's coming out summer, no specific date, but they're saying summer twenty twenty three. Uh, yeah, right. Um, just because it's a Final Fantasy game. When when was the last time a Final Fantasy game actually hit the original launch date? Um, but no, it looks great. I'm excited. I know a lot of people are super excited. Uh, mm. One of the two final things. They finally officially announced Resident Evil 4 Remake. And as yep. somebody that has, one, really only put much time into Resident Evil 4, and because of that, it is my favorite Final Fantasy game, or Final Fantasy, uh, Resident Evil game. Um, mm-hmm. I'm so excited. It looks fantastic. Uh, it Good looks thought. like we're going to be able to... I mean, if it's anything like the most recent remakes, it's going to make everything smoother. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm annoyed that we didn't get to see the 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 uh, the sales dude. The what are you buying? Mm-hmm. What are you selling? Um, mm-hmm. But it looks great, and it's not PlayStation exclusive. Uh, it is coming to Xbox. It's coming to PC on mm-hmm. March 24th of next year. Uh, well, everyone's super excited about you know Ashley coming back because the actress who is her face model is really cute and so on and so forth. But people forgot to. People apparently forgot that Resident Evil 4 has some of the most terrifying creatures to ever exist in a Resident Evil game before. The Regenerators and the Iron Maidens. So get ready for for full HD versions of that. <laughs> so it's funny you're talking about how terrifying that stuff is. Because alongside the remake, they've also announced that there is a, not specifically a full VR version, but they are working on VR in the world of Resident Evil 4. Um, no, not many details. Literally, was just like, "Hey, we're doing VR," um, which is fucking awesome. I'm excited for that. Will I get it? God, no. It's terrifying. Uh, <laughs> um, but the most important thing, because this is us. This is to us, to Space Time Taco, to Space Time Taco, to me specifically, Time Lord Burrito. The most important thing that was announced: Spider Man Remastered, and Spider-Man Miles Morales are coming to PC. Uh, Miles Morales later in the year, in fall. Um, Spider-Man Remastered, specifically August 12th. Um, the best part about this news <laughs> is that Insomniac specifically stated that Spider-Man would always stay an exclusive PlayStation to PlayStation. Um, people are saying that the reason why it is now on other things is because... Spider-Man isn't here. Spider-Man Remastered is coming to PC. (laughs) (laughs) So it's a loophole. Spider-Man, PlayStation 4, Marvel Spider-Man, not not coming to PC. Spider-Man Remastered. I'm as happy as I can be about this because at the end of the day, I understand that people who like PlayStation are going to love like PlayStation, but for the life of me, I cannot bring myself to buy a PS5 right now, just like I couldn't bring myself to buy a PS4 at launch. Too much money. Um, it's money and it's a lack of titles that I'm not already playing on other things anyway. Yeah. Um, with yeah, Horizon this... Zero Dawn coming to PC before I am hoping and excited for Horizon Forbidden West eventually coming to PC. So God, is God of God of War's on PC at this point too? Correct. God of War is on PC. Yeah. Yes. So, so at this point, the only games that I gave a shit about coming out on a PlayStation Five or Four. Are all on play on PC right now, or will be yeah. by the end of the year? Um, and that is nothing against PlayStation. Again, we as I'm not calling us Xbox fanboys, as Xbox owners, mm-hmm. we play all of the Xbox titles on PC because it's there. Everything that Xbox is putting out is coming to PC. Um, mm-hmm. That's been part of their thing for the better part of you know what for the entire decade so far since we're in 2020s Uh, (laughs) um but yeah i'm i have no need for it i have Mm -hmm. no money for it and the version that i want of the playstation 5 never fucking comes back in stock i i want the digital i don't need the disc version well you're the thing is is it's just hunting down the console has become exhausting in its own right You have to have the money for it, and I cannot, despite the money alone, I can't justify, there's no value in it, honestly. I mean, like, I get it, you, what I've said before is, you know, the draw for PlayStation was the exclusives, and 
if they're coming to PC, I think Sony needs to make a serious decision and a shift here. If their titles are coming to PC under these independent developers, maybe it's time to pull with some other... Maybe it's time to pull, like, a fucking Embracer Group style thing, buy these companies up, and just become a publishing house. Yeah. And well, they, just, I will say they do own Insomniac at this point. They have been picking up... Obviously, they picked up Bungie earlier this year. Um, but yeah. Sorry. You Okay. Yes. Okay. That was it. That's all I was going to say. Is they do they do own Insomniac at this point. <laughs> okay. So yes. Well, they own Insomniac, but I I don't know. I don't think PlayStation, unless they do something big, and very soon, is going to have much of a future in the console <laughs> the space. Yeah. Yeah. Um. They're, they're just they're seeing un- they un- can make that money on PC. Unfortunately, Xbox has kind of clinched the mainstream console space, and Switch has clinched the niche console space, so (laughs) they're kind of out of the game at this point. Um, And I don't know. Who who knows what the future holds? Who knows if there's a PlayStation 6 on the way? We have no idea. Which (laughs) one's the one that we, like, tap into our brains? Which one was that? Do you remember that from the commercials? I believe it was the PS3. Oh, okay. I don't know. Um... (laughs) But yeah, I'm excited for a lot of that stuff. Uh, again, I'm glad that it's most of it, besides Final Fantasy, is coming to other consoles or uh, platforms. Um, but hey, that's just the beginning. Like I said, starting Thursday, June 9th, uh, we've got Summer Game Fest leading into the more the most important thing, of course, the Devolver Digital. Uh, I believe it's called the Devolver Digital Marketing Countdown of Marketing or something like that. Um <laughs> Because yay, they are the fan- the greatest ever. Um, but yeah, is there anything else you wanted to cover before we end for the night? Uh, let me think. Something else? No, actually, no. That that should be all. <laughs> that should. Be. <laughs> all right. Well, hey, thank you for watching Space Time Taco. Uh, if you like what you hear, what you see, what we're doing, you can follow us on all social media at Space Time Taco. Uh, you can find me everywhere as Time Lord Burrito. And you can find me most places at a little teapot. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have anything to put on Instagram. I'm not signing up for Instagram. Yeah, just take a picture of your food. Um, like other people. Uh, <laughs> These are only fans. It's just going to be feet Ooh. pics. <laughs> uh, <laughs> go inside and play video games. <laughs> Stop talking. Back in my side of my eye, I got work. Think I'm out of place like a damn lost boy. Look up at the